Thank you, thank you. Appreciate you coming. I would like to ask two of our guests to leave at this time. I'd like to ask Tom and James to leave. The worst thing that can happen is you look out here and you see two speech instructors critiquing you. And uh, if that doesn't make you nervous, uh, I don't know what will. But thank you all for coming. I've got some handouts I'm going to give you here a little bit later and uh, on uh, advertising, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, anyone falling asleep will be escorted out of the room, uh, and uh, so everyone stay awake and uh, hope we have a little bit of fun here. Um, what I'm going to talk about today uh, is therapeutic humor, and I'm going to talk about using humor in the classroom. I'm going to talk about using humor in the workplace, in your everyday life, in a, in a very spontaneous manner, if you're uh, at the supermarket, or if you're uh, at the 101 bus stop, or wherever you might be, uh, using humor can benefit you and it can benefit other people. Uh, we'll talk about uh, uh, inappropriate humor, and sometimes we don't talk about that, but what types of humor would not be appropriate to use? What do you want to try to avoid? And then we'll talk about that. Uh, I hear a lot of people using humor. Sometimes I hear people using humor that it would probably be best not to, to use that, uh, whether it be uh, sexual jokes regarding gender or whether it be uh, religious jokes uh, or uh, some other types of jokes, racial or ethnic jokes that might uh, insult people. Uh, you may have good intentions to use humor, but sometimes it comes across in a different way. So I guess the first thing I would ask you is what is humor? Uh, it's the quality that makes something uh, uh, funny, amusing, and ludicrous. Okay, and and, uh, and that's that's kind of the definition of humor: making something funny, ludicrous, uh, and humorous. And uh, now, how many of you in here believe that you have a good sense of humor? Okay, those of you that don't, we'll have the ones that have a good sense of humor sit over on this side. Those of you that don't, we'll sit over here, and we'll be calling attention to you later. No, uh, but anyway. Uh, I think I've had a pretty good sense of humor for a long time, and uh, so I think it's helped me a little bit. But anyway, we're going to talk about several different areas of humor today. Uh, when you're, let's start off and talk a little bit about using humor in the classroom. Now, when you're using humor in the classroom, I think you have a lot of students that might feel intimidated, that might be shy. They're afraid to talk. So you can walk up and, and ask them something or say something to them that might be kind of ridiculous. I ask my students if I'll walk up to a student and I'll say, you know, it's Thursday. It's kind of towards the end of the week. Do you think maybe you could sing a song or dance or something, entertain us or something, and, and say something ridiculous to them? And, and it kind of opens up the lines of communication it kind of makes feel, people feel comfortable. Because I think with a lot of instructors, they feel intimidated. They feel that the teacher is not approachable. I think the worst character flaw that a teacher could have is, they're not, is the students do not feel they are approachable. They do not feel like you can come up and feel comfortable talking to them about an issue about their grade or something like this. And, and I think that's, that's, that's very unfortunate. I think if, if the students cannot feel comfortable talking to you, I think maybe you should look into some other line of work, maybe driving a truck or, or working in a store or doing something else. So uh, I think uh, using the humor, it, it works real well with shy people and kind of opens them up and makes you feel uh, that you're a part of the group and, and people feel comfortable coming up 
in addressing you or addressing some of their problems. I use a little bit of self-deprecating humor. Uh, I make fun of my computer skills. Uh, some of you know that I'm a complete idiot when it comes to computers, so don't tell anybody. But, but uh, anyway, it's okay to make fun of yourself. Uh, Missouri State University offered, in Springfield, offered a course in the psychology of humor in the spring of 2012, about four years ago. It was taught by Dr. John Doherty. I have not met him, but I did get a copy of his syllabus, and, and it's taught uh, it's taught as a graduate course, and it's taught in the psychology department. You can actually teach humor in several different areas. You can teach it in, under the psychology department, which is, that's the area that it's usually taught under. Or you can teach it in the sociology department, or you can teach it in the health department, because there's health benefits there, or you can teach it in the counseling department. On my master's degree, I have a minor in rehabilitation counseling, and, and that would be an excellent area in the counseling field to use humor, uh, or to teach the class in humor. And the University of Michigan was one of the first universities in the United States to teach a course in humor, and, uh, and they, they have an excellent program. It's, again, in the psychology department department where they teach that class. And uh, this, as far as I know, this is uh, the class that I teach each fall. I've taught it four times, as Amir had mentioned. Uh, it's the only class that I know of in China that's taught on humor. So uh, anyway, we have some fun with that. We have about 100 students in the class. Some people think, oh, well, we can just walk in there, we laugh, tell jokes, and oh, Yang Yang's going to give us an A. Well, it doesn't quite work that way. We, 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 they have to give uh, a speech, they have to do a skit, they have the final exam, and we have some discussions. We break up into groups, and we talk about humor. Um, OK, and uh, you know, Humor is universal from the standpoint that people laugh and they smile uh, all over the world. Uh, some, some jokes or some type of humor is a little different in different countries and in different cultures. But laughing and smiling, that's universal. You see someone laughing or smiling, you know they're having a good time. Either that or they're fooling you. Um, okay. Now, I wanted, um, as I mentioned, to re reiterate uh, using inappropriate humor, uh, uh, sexist jokes, jokes that have bad language, uh, 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 religious jokes, um, things like this that can be offensive. You may not intend for them to be offensive, but they come across that way. And so uh, it's... I always say if you're in doubt whether to, to say something like that, it's probably better not to say it. And because uh, you'll spend uh, a long time after that apologizing or trying to justify what you said. So it's probably. And another thing about humor, you don't have to, everything that comes out of your mouth, you don't have to make it funny. I think occasional humor is, that, is, is great, is a great thing. But you don't have to. Everything you say, it doesn't have to try to be funny. Uh, that you you can overdo it, and then then people won't start taking you seriously. Um, okay, now here is something that's very interesting to me. Uh, there's a statistic I came across a while back. In the United States, 70 percent of hospital visits or doctor visits in the United States are directly or indirectly related to stress problems. Heart attacks, high blood pressure, uh, headaches, backaches, uh, a lot of different issues re relating to your health, 70% of them are directly or indirectly related to your uh, 
to your stress level. Now, how you deal with stress is very important. Uh, some people say, oh, I don't have any stress. I live out in the country. Well, everybody has stress. Some people have more stress than others. I think if you live in an urban area, you're probably going to have more stress than if you live out in the country. But everybody has stress. Um, the, uh, there's an organization called the Applied and Therapeutic Humor Association. It's A-A-T-H. And they, they recommend using humor in individual counseling and, and also uh, with patients. They, f they find that that is very successful. You, you focus your attention on the humor and something positive rather than on uh, your illness. And, and that's really important. Um, okay. Uh, for patients and family, using humor, it, it's, it's kind of a respite uh, or short pause for the burden of illness, suffering, and grief. And, uh, and sometimes the humor can be subtle. You don't have to sit there and crack off a bunch of jokes. But, but using humor in a positive way, using it in a subtle way, can, be, can be, uh, relieve the stress and, and improve communication. Um, when we talk about uh, some of the physical aspects of using humor, uh, it, humor and laughing can improve your immune system. It can lower your blood pressure. It, it also, uh, people that have humor have, have less depression. They found that at the University of Maryland, they did a study and they found that 40% of uh, patients who had heart disease and heart problems, they found that 40% of those people laughed very little or almost none at all. So using humor can help your heart. It oxygenates the brain. It, 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 uh, it, it relieves your stress level. Your stress reduces your stress hormones. And, and, and it allows you to deal with problems uh, in, in a positive way. There's some things, I guess you have to figure out at some time, what things can you control and what things can you not control? And I figured out a long time ago, there's a lot of things I can't control. And, and so if I can't control it, then, then just deal with it the best way you can in a positive way. Uh, you can't you have no control over maybe how someone responds to you, but you, you have control of how you respond to that person. If they're, if they're, say, something negative to you or something that's personal. I have students, not students, but I have strangers that come up to me all the time and they'll say, how old are you? Or uh, how much money do you make? And my answers to that is 100 and the other one is, I have brain disease and I don't know how much money I make. I have Alzheimer's disease. So, anyway, so you, you can say something humorous there, but I always found it interesting. People want to know how much money you make. That's kind of a personal question there, but anyway. So, uh, also, people with a good sense of humor uh, usually have a positive cognitive appraisal. Uh, they, they can, uh, they are able to deal with problems better. Uh, they, they, there is a, there is a direct correlation between humor and creativity. I think that's kind of interesting. And, and Tom and James probably, I'm guessing, in some of their classes, they encourage people to use humor. And, uh, and I'm sure that, you know, in introducing a, a speech or something in the introduction or, uh, it, it's very helpful. It catches people's attentions. It, it, you know, uh, when you start out s saying something humorous, you've got their attention. Otherwise, they're sleeping and you have to wake up. You know. uh, now, the, they, they estimate that the average American laughs about 15 times a day. And, and uh, humor is a social phenomenon. That is, we tend to laugh and, and tell jokes more with our friends than we, than, 
than if we're by ourselves. If you're sitting home watching a TV program that's kind of humorous or reading a funny book, then you might laugh, but you're more likely to laugh if you're around your friends, your colleagues, and whatever. And so uh, it is a social phenomenon. Uh, now, we first of all, my advice would be don't take yourself too seriously. Uh, I've had teachers that are very serious. They had no sense of humor, and they're very strict, and and they think that's the best approach to learning. And I, I would tend to disagree with that. Um, if you take yourself lightly, it, it doesn't mean you have a low opinion of yourself. It doesn't mean that you're putting yourself down. It doesn't mean that you're incompetent, you're unprofessional, uh, or you're immature, or you're irresponsible, or you can never be serious. Some people think, oh, well, he's telling jokes. He, he can never be serious about anything. There are some things you should be serious about. But you, it, it doesn't demean you. It doesn't belittle you if you use a sense of humor. Um, if you take yourself lightly, uh, you can still have high self-esteem. You can command respect. And you can be competent. Um, it, it empowers you to take charge in stressful situations. Uh, and, in, and especially if you have embarrassing situations, that humor comes in very handy. Uh, and then I was mentioning earlier about how does, what are some of the health benefits of using humor. It, it uh, produces muscle relaxation automatically and naturally. Uh, it, it provides an immediate uh, release of tension, and, and uh, it's kind of like yoga in a way, you know, you, you get very comfortable, relaxed. Well, humor can have that same effect on you. Now, in my humor class, uh, at the beginning of the class every day, uh, my class meets, the humor class meets for a three-week period, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. The class met from five to 7.40. And at the beginning of the class, after I take attendance, I say, I've got a little exercise here for you. What I'd like you to do, I'm going to count to three, and I want you to laugh for ten seconds. And, they, and I thought, when I ask him to do that, they're probably going to sit there and, well, you know, what's he talking about? What are we supposed to do here? So, I thought we'd have a little exercise here, and... Uh, I know you might think this is a little trivial, but I'm going to count three, and I want you to laugh for ten seconds. All right? Here we go. E R sun. Okay, uh, excuse me, can you help me escort some of these people out of the room? <laughs> I thought my sister. But anyway, you know the interesting thing about laughing, it relaxes you, but you know the other thing that's nice? It doesn't cost you any money. You can spend hundreds of dollars. I, I find it very interesting. Uh, schools spend thousands of dollars and large sums of money on trying to improve teaching and, and, and how can we relate to the students better and make it more efficient and, and so on. And you know, the nice thing about humor, it doesn't cost you anything. That's good because I don't have any money. <laughs> but but it, it's, it's, it's uh, something that you can use. Any, anybody can use it. Now if you say, well, you don't have a sense of humor, well, uh, we'll take you outside here and beat you a little bit, and then we think your humor will be better. No. No. Uh, you can use humor and, and just try to find the positive thing, positive outlook on things or the humorous things. You see something and, and think of something positive or humorous, and, and I think it will help you deal with it better. Um, also, if you use humor and you laugh, you're able to sleep better at night, and uh, and your immune system is is uh, is stronger. Uh, 
Now, I don't know if it's a coincidence or not, but in about in 10 years that I've been here, I've never missed a class, and I, 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 rarely, I, I rarely get sick or have a, a bad cold, and, and I, I'm, I'm rarely sick. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm partly lucky, but I think using the humor would, allows me to feel better and relaxes me more. Um, okay, and laughter also protects the heart. Uh, laughter improves the function of blood vessels and uh, increases blood flow. And, uh, and that's what I mentioned earlier. Uh, the, at the University of Maryland, they did the study and they found that a lot of people that didn't laugh, they had more heart problems, heart attacks, problems like that. Um, and, uh, okay, and then uh, also humor is, is a, a powerful and effective way to heal resentments and disagreements and hurts. You can use that. Uh, sometimes that's, that's a difficult situation. Maybe you have somebody you don't really like. And, uh, and maybe you can use a little subtle humor to deal with that person. And, and maybe you, you can kind of grow to accept that person. Or maybe you have resentments or, about someone or some, something that happened to you. So that, that can, uh, using humor can help you overcome some difficult situations. It's interesting, uh, and you can probably ask Nicholas about this, little babies, infants, they start smiling and laughing at a very young age. And, and, they, and, and that's, that's very instinctive. And, and you'll tickle them or something, they'll laugh and they'll smile. And, and, and so that's, if, if infants can do it, then we can do it. Um, also, uh, people that have a good sense of humor, they don't suffer from depression as much as people who don't have a good sense of humor. People that have a sense of humor have a more balanced life. They, they sure, we all have our ups and our downs, but with, with humor, uh, people don't <coughs> they're less likely to go into a full-blown depression. They're less likely to uh, get really, really down. They, they, can, they usually can balance themselves and, 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 and uh, deal with some of their problems by, again, by not taking yourself too seriously. Um, now, uh, here's something that maybe you haven't thought about is, and I've thought about this quite a bit, do you think animals have a sense of humor? Do you think dogs and cats have a sense of humor? Now, uh, we, my wife and I, we don't have any children, but we have children, dogs, and cats, I guess. And, and anyway, uh, I think that animals, they can be very playful, but I think they also have a sense of humor. They get some satisfaction in doing things, and I think they enjoy it. I'll give you an example. Uh, when my wife and I got married a little over 30 years ago, uh, before we got married, my wife had a little uh, dog. Uh, it was a cross between a Yorkshire Terrier and a Poodle, and her name was Shauna. She was a little bit older dog. And so anyway, uh, one t uh, we, we would have a, a habit or ritual in the evening time, we would let Shauna uh, we would open the door and let her walk down the steps, and she'd go out and potty or poo-poo outside, and then she, she'd come back and she'd scratch on the door. And so we, we, that was just a normal routine for us. And so one time we, we let her out to potty, and she was gone for quite a while. And I told my wife, I said, I think I'm, we better go out there and check on her. There might, you know, I don't know. She's not usually gone this long. So we, we walked outside. We walked across the street, and our neighbors, Jim and Sarah, lived across the street from us there. And there was, we saw a big black bag 
of trash that was set out by the cor on the corner for the, the trash person to come by and pick it up. Well, it was, it was about 10.30 or 11 o'clock in the evening. So we walked over there, and we noticed that Shauna had gotten into that back, big black bag of trash. It had old, dirty diapers. They had two young children. They had these disposable diapers, just nasty diapers, and, and cans of food that were, cans were half open. That was food and stuff all over the place. And she had gone through that bag, torn it up, shredded it up. There was nasty diaper, diapers all over the yard, and it was an absolute mess. And so we walked up on Shauna, and I'm standing here, and my wife's standing here, and Shauna, she didn't even notice this, notice that we were there. Her hearing wasn't too good. And so anyway, she, uh, we, we, I said, Shauna, and she kind of looked back at me. I said, do you know anything about this? And she looked back at that, and then she looked back at me. And then my wife said, Shauna, did you do this? Do you know anything about this? And she looked at my wife, and she looked at the, kind of looked over the situation there. And then, and she's never done this before. I don't know where she learned this. But then she, she looked back at us, and she holds up this limp paw, and she starts limping. And she starts limping around, holding up that limp paw, that broken leg. And, and I guess she figures, you know, you don't punish an injured dog. <laughs> and, and I thought, oh, we can't punish her for this, can we? So we brought her back in the house. Now, she tended to generalize this, this response. We had, uh, a, a few weeks after that, we had an older lady that came to visit us at our house. And Shauna likes a lot of attention. So Shauna was uh, the, our friend, and my wife and I we were sitting there visiting in the living room. And Shauna wasn't getting much attention. So she uh, came walking down the hallway, and she, and she was walking, and she's holding up that limp hall like that. And, and, and our, our friend, she said, oh, goodness, you're, what happened to your dog? You broke its leg? Or, I said, well, you know, I bet if you pick her up and hold her and give her some attention, I'll bet you there will be a miracle that will happen. That, that leg will heal instantaneously. And, and sure enough, she picked her up, and it's amazing. No more leg problems. It, it went away. And then we had... We had a cat that would play little games. <clears throat> uh, I know they're playful, but I also think they have a sense of humor. We had, Shauna would, about 9.30 or 10 o'clock, she would uh, walk back to the bedroom. She had her little bed in our bedroom, and she'd walk back real slow, back to the bedroom, down the hallway. And one of, the, one of our cats, his name was Miami, and he would hide behind he would hide behind the door in the bathroom, and he would he he would hear you know coming very slowly down the hallway. He'd he'd hide behind the door, and she'd get there. He'd jump out at her like that, and she'd jump about that about a foot off the ground, and and then she'd get angry and she'd. <laughs> you know. But I think they have a sense of humor. If they don't, it, it kind of fools me. Uh, they find in your personal life, if you're married, if you, your wife or your spouse or uh, your boyfriend, girlfriend, they find that people that have a sense of humor, they, they find that they get along better, they have fewer problems, they can relate better, communicate better, and, and, and that's good. I've been around people that didn't have a very good sense of humor. And uh, anyway, uh, in 1987, I had thyroid cancer. I had a tumor in my neck, and, and it was about the size of a big goose egg. It was displacing my trachea. It was, uh, the tumor was pushing up against my, 
trachea, and that's very serious because when your trachea collapse, collapses or breaks or whatever, you're dead. I mean, that's, that's very, very serious. And <clears throat> so I was in graduate school at that time, and I had, uh, I, ha I went in and had some tests done, and they confirmed it on a Wednesday afternoon and, and Friday morning I was in the, uh, I was having surgery Friday morning at Baylor Hospital in Dallas, Texas. And they said, if I had gone a little bit longer, I wouldn't be standing up here talking to you about humor. So uh, it was, but anyway, the, <clears throat> the doctor told me, he said, you know, this is a very serious operation. He said, he said that your, your uh, vocal cord is very close to that area. And when you're doing surgery, there's, there's a possibility your vocal cord could be severed in that surgery. Not, you know, they, didn't, they don't intend for it to be severed, but there's that possibility that it could be. So anyway, uh, uh, the you know, doctor was real serious about that, and I said, okay, it could be severed, but please don't tell my mother-in-law because if she finds out, she'll be real happy about that. I can't talk anymore. And so anyway, <clears throat> so anyway, I did use humor during, uh, during the, my, I had thyroid cancer and had radiation treatment in 1987 and two years later in 89, cancer cells reappeared and I had more radiation. And uh, not, not that I don't take cancer seriously, because it's, it's a very serious situation, but the cancer's not going to control me. I'm going to control the cancer. I'm going to be in charge. But uh, anyway, um, now, uh, I don't know if you, uh, in 1999, there was a movie that came out, and I don't know if you had seen this movie uh, I've been trying to get a hold of a copy of it. I want to show it uh, to my humor class. But the, the movie was entitled Patch Adams. It started uh, Robin Williams. It came out uh, in 1999, I believe. And it's a true story about this. Uh, Robin Williams pay, plays this Patch Adams, who is an older guy, a kind of a non-traditional student, that goes to medical school in New York, and this takes place in the, the late 1960s. And he's in medical school, and um, he's uh, going to school there, and he has a very good sense of humor. And while he's in medical school, he, he tries to use humor with his colleagues, with the staff, with the patients, and, and at first, the, the administration was not too keen on him using humor. They didn't think that's appropriate. Let's, let's be serious, you know, this medicine, it's serious business. Let's don't be telling jokes. Let's don't be using humor. Let's be serious about everything. And so anyway, uh, he, he got reprimanded several times while he was in medical school. He almost got kicked out of medical school. And uh, so anyway, but I thought one of the most poignant parts of that movie is he walks into this cancer, uh, pediatric cancer unit for young children. They had just, uh, some of them had just had cancer surgery or they were going to have cancer surgery or they were getting chemotherapy. And, and they, uh, there were, oh, I don't know, eight or ten young children say between the ages of six or seven, maybe up to about 13 or 14. And they were in this unit there. And uh, so anyway, uh, he walked by there one day and he just kind of stuck his head in. And, and all the children were very quiet. They didn't say anything. They seemed kind of depressed, very despondent. And, and anyway, uh, so he... He decided to come in there uh, again and come in there on a regular basis. And when he did, he would talk to the children. He would laugh with them, tell jokes. He put on a red funny nose and a, and a wig. And he, 
he'd tickle them and talk to them and tell jokes and laugh with them. And the children started laughing. They, they're, they, they went from being very quiet, very depressed, and, and very unhappy to laughing and joking and, and smiling. And, and I thought that was one of the most poignant parts of the movie. And, and, uh, and the other staff, the morale improved in the hospital where he was working. People were uh, not taking themselves too seriously. And, and, uh, and, uh, and I thought, here the children now are focusing on something positive and something humorous that they, can, they feel good about. And they, they're, they're leaving their pain and their suffering behind, at least temporarily. And I thought that's an excellent example of how it can be used. Okay. Um, now, uh, I want to mention something about workplace humor. If you have, if some of you have worked uh, out in, in different other companies or other schools or other situations, I've worked in uh, a state program, a, a federal program, I've worked in private businesses, and I've had some very good supervisors that had a good sense of humor, and I've had some that had no sense of humor, and you had very serious, and you, you didn't feel very comfortable talking to them. Well, anyway, uh, using humor in the workplace can improve communication. Uh, the self-deprecating humor, where a supervisor makes fun of himself, or he doesn't take himself too seriously. And, and uh, so, uh, this, this, is, this is good. And, and also you'll find the morale in, in the workplace is higher when people use humor. They can put funny pictures on the wall or they uh, wear a clown nose or something or a wig or something like that, do something ridiculous. And, and so, uh, you know, one of the, some of the uh, old school people or people that are very strict or very serious, they might say, well, wait a minute, if, you know, if you start using humor and, and having a good time at work, it, you're, you're going to be goofing off, you're not going to be producing the work, you, you know, you're not going to get anything done. And that's not true. That is not true. They have found that in a positive environment where people use humor, productivity goes up. And that's important to the business. It's very important because if you can justify you know, in, increase productivity and, and higher morale, then, then, you know, that's a very positive thing. Uh, people uh, feel good. I, you know, one of the worst problems in the workplace is people hate their job. They hate going to work. They, they, they have a job. They don't like their boss. They don't like their work. They, they're looking for another job. They hate it. And, and that's a terrible situation to be into. But if you have a good sense of humor, if the people you work with, your boss has a good sense of humor, you feel better about it, you, uh, uh, you can communicate with that person, you feel comfortable around that person, and, and it, it works out real well. And, uh, but I think the biggest misconception is people think, oh, well, if you're laughing, you're having fun at work, you must not be getting anything done, and productivity is going to go down, and that's not true. Now, uh, I want to mention something here. Um, we've talked about using humor with, you can use it with anybody, at the supermarket, with strangers, with your friends, with your family, with your students, in the workplace. There's all kinds of places that you can use it in a positive way. Uh, now, uh, <clears throat> there's also what we call accidental linguistic humor. And, and uh, in my uh, years of teaching here, I've had a couple of situations that were kind of interesting. One is there was a situation where a student was giving a speech and they had the cover sheet, thank you, they had, uh, they, they were turning in a paper to me and they, they had, in the top left side they had their name, they had the section number, Sociology 150, and then they had um, 
they had, in large letters, they were trying to spell the word assignment. They wrote it out in, in their handwriting. In large letters, they were trying to say the word assignment. And they were going to turn that into me. In fact, they did turn it into me. The only problem is they made a misspelling. Instead of spelling it A-S-S-I-G-N-M-E-N-T, they spelled it A-S-S-M-A-N-A-G-E-M-E-N-T, which is ass management. <laughs> and I thought, hmm, we got a lot of that going on in Washington, D.C. Ass management. <laughs> and that's what they turned in. And I laughed about that for a long time. I still have that. And then there was... You can get emails, and some it's interesting, sometimes one letter, you leave out a letter or you misspell something and it has a whole different meaning. One girl was, was wanting to, she sent me an email and she was wanting to I, bargain with me about her grade. I had determined she was going to get a B in the class, but she thought or was hoping she'd get an A in the class. So she sends me this email, she says, young, young, she said, uh, I know maybe I didn't study as hard as I should have, and, uh, but I'm, I'm really hoping for a positive outcome here. And uh, uh, she was trying to say, uh, I would like to meet with you this afternoon at 2 o'clock and discuss my grade. She was going to bargain with me. And anyway, she was trying to say, it would be an honor to talk with you this afternoon about my grade. Well, she misspelled the word honor, and she said it would be a horror to talk to you this afternoon about my grade. And I thought, when you find out you're going to get a B, it'll probably be a horror for you. So, misspellings. And then there's the old Freudian slip you probably have heard about, Sigmund Freud. That This man goes to uh, uh, Paris, France. He's on a business trip. He's over there, and he's going to send his wife a business card. And, and at the, he tells where he's been, what he's doing, and at the bottom of the card, he, he wants to write, wish you were here, wish you were here, you know, love Bob. Well, anyway, he left off one little important letter, and he said, wish you were her. <laughs> and uh, so that's a Freudian slip. Okay. Um, now, uh, I want to mention something about advertising. I have some handouts here, and then we'll let you go here in just a bit. These are, in my humor class, I had some students bring in some uh, humorous advertisements. And, and they find that in advertising, humor works. It sells the products. People remember the products better. And I'm going to show you. Uh, I hope I have enough. I, hope I, I may not have enough for everyone, but Let's see, this is one for Burger King. Now, Burger King is the, is uh, like McDonald's, it's a fast food restaurant. Okay. And then, that one, the, this Burger King, the, the, this shows Mount Rushmore, which is a famous monument in the United States. And they're, all of them are eating their cheeks are full from eating Burger King hamburgers. Okay, that's one of them. Now, here's one. Can someone get the candles out? There's, this is one that's on the front and the back. And this one it deals with, this one here is an advertisement for pedigree, Light, light dog food. This big fat dog is trying to go through this door and get stuck, and the cat is walking by. And then on the back of that, this is kind of hard to see, but this is an advertisement for a candy bar, and it's on a bus. When it, the door, when the door opens, the candy bar goes further into its mouth. Okay. Okay. This one is, 
This is an advertisement for Subway. And in big letters on a billboard, it says sex, S-E-X. -S and then it says in smaller letters, now that we have your attention, eat it Subway. Okay? Okay. Now, here's one I'm going to hand out. This is one uh, advertising a dog food. And it says, bad food, bad dog. And so if you're feeding your dog bad food, the, the dog's behavior is going to be bad. Okay, and then this one, my brother's a commercial artist. He did a cartoon. I have a friend in Yangtai. She's a, she's a teacher, Chinese lady, and she likes cookies. So I decided to have him draw a picture of a bunch of hand bears sitting in a classroom, and they're all sitting around eating cookies in the classroom. One, this is um, kind of a cartoon here I'm going to hand out. On the one side it says aromatherapy candles and it has a picture of a dog's rear ends and the tail sticking up in the air and they're smelling that. And then this one is, is an advertisement that says Bob and Steve noticed no one else was wearing a collar. Suddenly they realized they were in a stray bar. They have these two dogs in a gay bar. SPCA. This is a, an, an animal shelter that they want to adopt dogs, and they show this dog. Uh, this is kind of a little hard to see, but he has a broom, and he's he's cleaning up his. He had a little accident, and he's cleaning it up. And this is one for a cat for SPCA. The cat has a vacuum cleaner and it's vacuuming the, the, the sofa where you made a little bit of a mess. <coughs> and here's one. This is uh, one for breast enhancement advertising. And I think you'll see the point of that. One more. This is an advertisement for a shampoo. And it shows a lion. The lion on the left has natural wild hair. When they use the shampoo, the hair is soft and combable. Oh, and by the way, I also have for each person have an average day. We don't say have a good day, we have an average day. Okay, um, does anyone have any questions? Um, I, my, my advice is use humor, make your class interesting, it'll improve your health, it'll improve your communication, and uh, I hope I didn't go over too far over the time limit. No, but, I think that was great, yeah. Thank you very thank much. You, thank you. And uh, if you have any, does anyone have any questions, comments, anything you'd like to? Okay. And if you don't improve your sense of humor, we'll take you out here and beat you a little bit. And then... Okay.
Did, did anyone... Did anyone not get uh, have an average day? Did you? Okay. Any questions? you all very much and uh, hope to use your humor and if, if I can help any time in the future let me know and have an average day. All right. Yes, one more round of applause here for the